Traveled 12,000 kilometers across the world to Abu Dhabi after a special invitation to work in an extraordinary vet hospital. The animal they treat here is also extraordinary the falcon. Falcons, they're not just birds, they have their own passports. They can fly internationally in the cabin of the aircraft with their owners. So you can imagine that if they get sick, they get treated like royalty. And that royalty treatment happens right here. Have a look at these guys. So oh, lovely. <laughs> it's amazing. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good, I'm Chris from Australia. You yes, see Dr. Um, Margaret. Yeah, okay, I'll need to. Thank you. This is the weirdest waiting room I've ever seen. Hi, hello. hello. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet lovely you. Lovely to meet you. How are you doing? A couple of your patients waiting here? Oh, definitely, yes. They're just what? waiting for the checkup now. A world away from Bondi, Chris is meeting hospital director Dr. Margit Muller. I'm not jumping the queue, am I? Uh, no, you're always welcome to jump the queue, of course. I walk in and straight away realise this place is like nothing I've ever seen before. It's a vet hospital totally devoted to an animal that means a lot to me. <laughs> I have two favourite birds, the pelican and the peregrine falcon. I want to know, though, for you, as a vet, you could have worked with any animal. What, what is it about falcons that, that captivates you? <laughs> Falcons are fascinating. It's not just a bird, it's um, an individual character. It's a real personality. And the more you work with falcons, the more you learn. I mean, I'm working with falcons now since 16 years, but still I'm learning. And that's fascinating with falcons. It's just a beautiful bird. You look in their eyes and they're captivating you. And that's actually what happened to me. So it's like a virus. It's catching you and it never lets you go. <laughs> Every year, Margit and her team treat over 9,000 sick and injured falcons. That is a lot of birds. The first feather of the wing is broken, which means that's causing her really a problems to fly. And in the same time, if the new feather would grow, she would not have any hold. When so it means she's not flying yeah. straight and level. See here? Oh, so wow. this is missing. Yeah. The first one is missing. Okay. And that's an important one. The sad fact is a falcon would find it incredibly hard to survive in the wild with an injured wing. Good. This girl needs immediate surgery if she's a chance of having that wing repaired. The need here is that she can't go back out and be a normal falcon until she has yes. perfectly balanced wings and exactly. can fly normally. Yes, because if one feather breaks, then the next one could break and then it could just go down and this will cause her really a major problem. What happened? Left them somewhere. Uh, attacked by a dog. OK. Oh. Let's have a listen. Back in Australia at the Bondi Referral Hospital SASH, emergency vet Dr Lisa Chimes is urgently assessing a badly injured Burmese cat. Coco has been rushed in. She's been mauled by a dog. She's got serious injuries. She's in shock and she needs emergency care right away. Let's give you a little prick now, sweetie pie. OK, darling. Distressed owners Tracy and Vance found the traumatised cat just moments after the shocking attack. She was cowering in the next door neighbour's yard and just howling. Um, I went over and tried to pick her up, but just, just she wouldn't let me near it. It, it. it was a horrible, horrible thing to see. Hi, right, darling. Oh, there had some bite wounds over there. Yeah. Coco's really being beaten up. She's having breathing difficulty. We're giving her oxygen, trying to place an IV catheter, and I need to take a better look at those wounds to see how bad the damage is. Good girl, Coco. I'm just clipping off Coco's hair at the moment to try and work out where these wounds are. The concern is that what I'm seeing on the skin is really just the tip of the iceberg. If Coco's got serious injuries underneath these skin wounds, her life is in jeopardy.
Would she have broken that feather just through a flying accident? Yes, that's usually something? how they do it, yes. When they fly or when they hit a prey or they chase a prey and they hit, then they break the feathers. At the state-of-the-art Falcon Hospital in Abu Dhabi, Chris and Dr Margit Muller are about to begin delicate wing surgery. He's to the Ferrari of, of the bird world, isn't she? She is, but in the same time, when you look at her like this, she looks like she has a big body. But when you open up the wingspan, you can see that the body is actually quite small compared to the wingspan. We have some falcons that have a wingspan up to 1.2 or 1.3 meters. So it's really huge. And is so this the, the problem here? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So she's missing yeah, she's the missing first this part. primary. The, it's the first primary, yes. yes. Primary flight feathers are called that because they are the most important feathers a bird has. They take most of the force and give them most of the lift they need to get up into the air. Without them, they can't fly efficiently or safely. And in order to fix the feathers, we have some spare parts. Did I hear that right? Spare parts. Oh, wow. We have thousands of feathers for the left wing, right wing, tail feather, first feather, second, third, for all the different species and for all the different genders. When you're dealing with the Ferrari of the bird world, it makes sense that you might have to go to the mechanic for a bit of a tune-up. Well, Margit, as a specialist falcon doctor, is that mechanic. And naturally, she has a very special spare parts drawer. This is feather number one. It's a very slim, a very small one, and this is the one that we have to repair. Feather number two is a little bit slim here, mm -hmm. but here it gets a little bulky, and number three is quite a bulky one. If you put a wrong feather or one which is too large, the bird has again problems to, to balance, so it's useless what you do. So you must do a perfect match. So that one's shorter, so you're trying to get the same yes. thing here? Yes. See? And this one, it is still a little bit too long. Yeah. So it has to be shortened up to here, actually. OK? This is artwork. That's great. Check it in here. Yep. So even though this is a state-of-the-art vet hospital, not everything is high-tech. Now that's a stick for barbecue. You will put your meat and prawn and skewer. vegetable on it. It's a skewer. <laughs> and we put feathers on them because it's bamboo. It's lightweighted, it's elastic, you can move it, you can see. Yeah. It's the perfect material to fix feathers on them. So we are skewering the feathers on them, actually. So the Ferrari has a skewer inside it? Exactly. <laughs> Never been a Ferrari mechanic, but I'm about to become a bird Ferrari mechanic. Okay, and then you mix. Yeah. Now you put it inside the shaft. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the most seemingly simple things are actually the hardest to do. We're talking about a skewer and a bit of glue here, but I'm sweating. This just has to be so precise, and the pressure's on. You put this feather inside the shaft, OK? Yeah. And try to make a nice alignment. It's intense there, isn't it? You have to get it right. It is, it is. Chris and Margit now have to wait for the bird to wake up before they'll know if the surgery has been a success. You have to get it 100% right. 99% is not good enough for a falcon. She's really been munched here. Look at these wounds. At Sash, dog attack victim Coco is in serious trouble. Okay. All right, honey. Oh. OK, sweetie pie. Lisa is urgently trying to find out just how badly she's been mauled. It really worries me when a five kilo cat like Coco has been attacked by a big dog. Bite wounds not only cause tissue damage by tearing and shredding the skin and muscles, but they also inject bacteria, which can have life-threatening complications. Suddenly, Coco's condition starts to deteriorate. You want some oxygen for him? Yeah, we'll put a mask on him. He's really breathing up. What we're going to do now is get Coco into the oxygen cage so she can stabilise a little bit more because she's having some breathing difficulty. Now, that might simply be because she's in shock, but it might also mean that she's got some injuries in her chest from the bite wounds. Really struggling, aren't you, sweetie? You just breathe in that oxygen. Coco's devoted owners have been anxiously waiting for any news about their critically injured little girl. So we've clipped up all the hair over her rump and she's got lots of bite marks there. The problem with that is we don't actually know what damage they've done underneath. So 
best thing to do for her would be to take some x-rays off her and see what's going on in her abdomen and any obvious bony abnormalities. And Can we see her? Yeah, absolutely. Tracy and Vance are in a little bit of shock. Their beloved cat has just been mauled by a dog and now I'm here telling them that her life could be in jeopardy. And that's just a lot to take in. Okay, so here she is. Oh. Open it up. Hello, baby. Oh, princess. You had a tough day. It's really hard to say goodbye because I don't know what's going to happen to her. I don't know whether she's going to be okay. It's very tough. We'll look after her. And I promise you. she's in very good hands here, but I, I can't really give you any guarantees until we know exactly what yeah. she's done to herself. Mm -hmm. Seeing Tracy and Vance visit Coco in the oxygen cage and watching them with her made me really sad. Thanks, Lisa. Right, no Thank problem. you. They absolutely love their cat, and if I can't get her back to them, it's going to break my heart as well. Once they wake up, they're fully clear. They're not dizzy. Wake up so quickly, doesn't it? Mm. It's much faster than dogs or cats. Mm. In Abu Dhabi, it's an anxious wait for Chris and the team to see if they've managed to successfully repair an injured falcon's wing. Just testing out the new equipment. This is amazing. That was something else. Fixing a Ferrari with a one cent barbecue skewer. But now the biggest test will be to see if it works. <laughs> It's she was having, here, isn't she it? Was having a closer look. <laughs> yes, definitely. There's something very unique about this entire experience. You've got a vet clinic that is solely focused on falcons. You've got a woman in Margit who's devoted her life to treating them. This is something I'll never forget. Sometimes when you look in their eyes, you know they're saying, OK, try to help me or do something, even if it's a hopeless case. And then you try whatever you can do, and normally it works out well, yes. Well, I think you're doing more than just a little bit for them. You're doing a lot for them. <laughs> they are my passion, yes. <laughs> All right, darling, that's OK. All right, kitty, kitty. Back at Sash, little Coco is fighting for her life after being savagely mauled by a dog. What a good girl. We're about to take some x-rays of Coco. We don't know the extent of her injuries, and looking at these pictures will give me a lot more indication as to how bad the damage is. Lisa is worried the little Burmese may need surgery on her shocking bite wounds. OK. So I'm looking at her chest. As I'm looking at the x-rays, I'm focusing on different parts of her body to see if this dog's teeth have done some serious damage. So I'm looking for any fractures, any broken bones. My goodness. This is amazing. I just can't believe this. This is not what I was expecting. Coco is only five kilograms, and as I'm looking at her x-rays, I just can't believe that she hasn't got any broken bones and that her abdomen and chest are looking OK for now. It's quite amazing. But the little cat isn't out of danger yet. Lisa needs to find out if any of her organs have been damaged or if she has internal bleeding. So we're just doing an emergency ultrasound on Coco, trying to look for any areas where she's had trauma. So any sign of fluid in the abdomen which might indicate bleeding or rupture of an organ. So her bladder looks fine, kidneys look fine, no sign of fluid anywhere. Coco's passed all the tests for now, but she still has some pretty nasty skin wounds. They can become infected, and that can quickly be fatal. Lisa's urgent priority now is to keep Coco's wounds stabilised and stop the spread of infection. The next 12 hours will be critical. She's nowhere near out of the woods yet. I just hope, for Coco's sake and her family's, that we can get her through it. That's a girl. Right, so 
So we've got all our gear. I think that I'd feel it myself would be primary gator catches. At the Australian Reptile Park, irate alligators are jostling for territory rights and it's getting ugly. Most of the problems are happening because we've got some younger males that are now full size. They're big boys and they're trying to overthrow the older males. Now that can end in some pretty serious injuries and potentially death. Remember, these big boys, they're a few hundred kilos. If they roll and your leg's under, it's going to snap. So keep it out of the way. OK, let's do it. The keepers need to be able to identify the troublemakers. But the problem is, in the water, all the alligators look the same. The plan is to catch them and put a white mark on each of their tails. And we'll mark the scales in different patterns. And when they swim, their tail sits proud in the water and we can observe who's doing what. Tim needs extra helping hands, so park builder Dan is about to get an impromptu lesson in alligator safety. All of these females need to go back in the water, but we'll just do Gator 101. The fact is, even though Dan's a builder, he needs some experience in this area. Everyone does, because he doesn't need to know how to catch a gator, but he needs to know how to respond if there's an emergency. Come on here. That's it. Well done, mate. You can use a little bit of force on the nose, OK? And that'll stop him. You certainly don't get to jump on uh, gators when you're building, that's for sure. But you have to know, once we start this and they think it's feed time, yep. they're going to come three times faster. Come on. Come on. Come on. A bit more. A bit more. Up. The first alligator to be lured out is Further big comes, and he's do. angry. Right oh. No surprise who it is. It's Mr Skinny. He's the oldest and historical dominant gator. Maybe not that case anymore. Good. OK, up, boys. Dan on the rope. Come this side. Mike, you protect us. Oh, a bit more. A bit more. OK, Mike, on with me. Obi, watch water. Stay down. This is a really dangerous situation. OK, we're going to take him to that tree. We've got 40 gators, and most of them think it's feed time. So they have one of the strongest jaw pressures on Earth, and we've got the biggest of the big here. You want a hand? We need to have our wits about us and just be ready for anything to happen. Jeez, they're coming in thick and fast. Hey, Coco. How are you feeling? Hmm? At Sash, it's been an anxious night for Lisa and the team, monitoring traumatised bite victim Coco. When I look at those wounds, I'm concerned about them. They're swollen, they're painful, and I'm worried that if we don't take her to surgery, that they'll break down, become infected, and that could put Coco's life in jeopardy. Tracy, hi, hi come hi. through. Thank you. Waiting has been agonising for Coco's distressed owner, Tracy. Now, Lisa has to deliver some bad news. So. The wounds, remember I said it was a possibility that they're not going to drain very well? Mm -hmm. Well, today that's our, our concern and the best thing we can do for that would be to actually do a surgical procedure where we open up that skin really to bride out all the dead tissue, all the damaged muscle under there and put some drains in. If we are proactive and do it early, then she's got a much better chance of recovery and a much um, reduced chance of complications. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I think, yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's, uh, actually, I was hoping for, for better news today. When I heard the word surgery, you know, I started crying because I, I, I think I had an expectation that um, she'd just have a few days here. It's a worrying time. That's what I'll spend the day doing now, worrying about her. Deep and nasty injury. She's in a very dangerous situation. Yeah. Keep him back. At the Australian Reptile Park, cranky alligators are getting a little too close for comfort. Oh, listen to that. The plan is to catch the big gators. And when we get them up close, we can individually identify most of them. But what we need to be able to do is identify them in the water when they're swimming around and causing problems. Start from the top, hey? Yep. Now, the only way to do that is to mark them and then we'll be able to observe from a distance and find out who the trouble causes are. But they're all coming in. 
We have to be really aware because this situation can go bad really quick. Right, Mike? You are right? You go. But uh, let's get number two. Here he comes. Over here, fellas. We might catch him here, hey? Gator number two on, is huge, with an appetite to match. Good. OK, rope. Come bring him this way. Swing this way. Watch him for roll. Again. This is one of the teenagers and arguably the biggest gator in the lagoon. So we'll mark him now. The boys have decided we'll call him Stonker and we get to watch him over the next few weeks. Stonker doesn't want a paint job and he's letting the team know it. Just be ready, Dan. He can go any time. OK. He's sucking in the big breath and that means he's getting his energy back. OK, everyone on. <laughs> he's going again, he's going again. Just remember, you're just going to have to hold him still yep. so he doesn't freak out, but I've got his little treats anyway for him. 17-year-old Declan and mum Carol Ann have arrived at the Bondi Clinic with their brand new cavoodle pup, Cujo. Hello. Hi, how are you? This is little Cujo for his next injection. He's been good? He's been very good. Excellent. He has become my best friend very quickly and he'll be my best friend for a long time. Hello. Cujo is Declan's much-loved companion dog. Declan has cystic fibrosis and he's been very, very sick his whole life. His doctor actually recommended a puppy dog for him to help him uh, have a best friend, uh, four-legged friend, <laughs> you know, that's there every day, that wants to kiss him every morning and cuddle him and it's made him a lot happier, it's given him a new lease on life. He loves him, the moment he saw him, so it's awesome. Hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Now, is this Cujo? This is Cujo. I need that black fur somewhere. Yeah. Can't really see him. He's getting so long. <laughs> All right, come on through. Chris has arrived back from Abu Dhabi just in time to give Cujo a vaccination and an all important health check. I'm hoping he passes his health check so we can go to the park. Uh, he can come to the hospital with me, uh, maybe even go to the farm, something, everything really. How long have you had Cujo for? About five weeks. Five weeks, yeah. Oh, quick on the tongue. Oh, yes. yes. He loves lick. <laughs> he licks. Well, we said he kisses. <laughs> they're, they're French kisses. Yes. If they're kisses, they're really... All over Declan's face. I'm like, oh, Declan. It turns out this is more than just a health check for Cujo. This is actually a check to make sure that Cujo is healthy enough and protected enough to be able to go into a human hospital with Declan and keep him company while he undergoes treatment for cystic fibrosis. How's he been around home? Has he been nice and healthy and you haven't noticed any problems? Uh, no. no. Even though the risk of transfer of any disease between pets and people is incredibly small, the fact is if Cujo isn't healthy on this health check, I can't pass him as being okay to go to the hospital. The outcome of that would just be devastating. Come on, Coco, you've got to wake up now, honey. Every animal recovers from anaesthetics differently. Some sit up right away and others take a long time to wake up, like Coco. She's an older cat, she's cold, she's got lots of factors delaying her recovery. Hopefully she pulls through this because this little cat does not need another disaster. Okay, so breath. Yeah, it's moving a bit more. It's coming around now. There you go. That's better. Coco has finally recovered from the anaesthetic. And right now, she's conscious, she's groggy on pain relief, but at least she's still with us. Coco will have to be closely monitored around the clock to make sure there are no signs of deterioration. You've been through so much, sweetheart. That's a brave girl. Is someone getting taken out? Yeah. No. I seem not too happy with it. At the Australian Reptile Park, 
angry alligator Stonker has been marked and is ready for release. So when it's time to jump off, we've got to do it swiftly and get out of the way because we don't want to get smashed by his tail, we don't want to get smashed by his jaws. OK, Dan up. Yep, right to go. Mike, back. One, two, three. We've all jumped. Everyone's waiting for something to happen. Three. And Stonker just sits there. He starts to head back to the water and we pop the blindfold off. Job done. Two adult males have now had their tails painted so they'll be easier to identify. OK, well, that's two. Let's get number three. That's it. Watch, Bill. Right out. We're on. Tim and the team suspect at least two more alligators need to be singled out. But all the commotion is making the animals even more aggressive. Whack it. Righto, let's get up, boys. All hands on. One, two, three. OK, Mike, let's jump. Blindfold. Guys. You got him. Whoop, he's turning. He's not as big as Stonker, but he's bigger than Mr Skinny. He needs a name. Malcolm in the middle. Malcolm's telltale battle scars confirm he's one of the ringleaders. This is a minor injury. We've had gators years gone by that have had really serious lacerations from teeth. That's exactly what we're trying to prevent. OK, we're going to let him go, boys. You right to jump again? Yeah, ready to go. Right. Oh, you hold him. Mike, off. Way. off. Yeah, right. That's it, mate. Jeez, he took off. You right? That's Brutus. Heading away from us there, he's actually chasing that other gator off. Tim and the team now have to round up the meanest gator of them all, a repeat offender called Brutus. Brutus, a few years ago, was sent to the naughty corner. Straight up. We had to catch him, take him out and put him in a cooling off pond for spring and summer. That wasn't easy. Reintroduce him in autumn once it had cooled down. I'll see you later. He's a lot bigger than he used to be. He's grown, not in length, but size. Oh. I know he used to be a cheeky teenager. I'm wondering now if he's the king of this lagoon. Watch out, boys. So this is his worm tablet as well. At the Bondi Clinic, Companion dog Cujo is getting a thorough health check. It's an anxious time for owner Declan. He suffers cystic fibrosis and is desperate for Chris to give the little pup a clean bill of health. This health check's very important because Declan goes into hospital every three to four weeks and I would really love Cujo to be able to go in with him and if he can't, it'll be very disappointing for Declan and upsetting to all of us. What do you reckon? You're going to scream? Yep. Last time. Yeah, last time. How are you with needles? He's yeah, great. Better than Give me. Give it to Declan instead. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be caring. <laughs> Next, Cujo needs a nail trim. This won't hurt him. <laughs> but he isn't enjoying all the attention. The thing about trimming a dog's nails is you're only removing the very outer edge of the nail and there's no blood supply to that part, and there's no nerves in there either. So it should be painless. It did hurt. That is a measure of... What a wussy is. is. Well, How hey, they were, your, is. they were your words, but he, <laughs> I, I'm taking what off the spoiled. very tip. There's no nerve endings where I'm taking no, the, these bits of nail off, so... You just spoiled your shiny thing. Cujo, the name in Spanish means Tough and strong. Cujo, there's nothing wrong. We'll probably have to rename him. He's learnt that maximum volume gets maximum response. Because <laughs> I'm holding his paw there. That's, there's nothing more than I'm doing. The fact that Cujo is howling with apparent pain over what should be a painless nail clip tells me that life up until now, it's been pretty good. In fact, it's been as good as it gets. So he's been vaccinated, he's been wormed. Lovely. He's had his flea and heartworm treatment. Lovely. Okay, so he's had everything done. There's no reason why he can't go into the hospital with you. He, he looks great. Which is good. I feel very happy, so he gets to come in with me, so I don't have to worry about that anymore and I can focus on getting healthier, I guess. 
Chris also wants Cujo to learn who's the boss. Good news for you, potentially not so great news for Cujo, is that um, Cujo needs to be enrolled. Stat. Yeah. In puppy school. I think puppy school will be great for Declan and Cujo, for Declan's confidence uh, to be able to go outside, to take him places, do things with him. Their relationship will even be stronger. <laughs> good luck with this one. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. You got a good dog there, buddy. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. Got him? Yeah. Which way are we going? All right. At the Australian Reptile Park, just seconds after the team finally managed to trap Brutus, the biggest and baddest boy of them all, he escapes. Right. Plan B is to head out in the boat. Let's go fishing. They're hanging around the edges where it's shallow enough that we believe we can get it. A noose underwater and around the gator's head. Then we throw the rope into our mates, hold on for dear life, and get him ashore. Here he is. Rather than the moon. Hold on, hold on, back pedal, back pedal. That's him. Oh, we got him. Whee! Oh. OK, go, 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 go. We've hooked one. I think it's Brutus. Can't be sure. He's given us an awful fight. All I can think about is get the rope to Mike, get the rope to Mike. He's all yours, mate. Let's get in. Right, uh, hang on, we're coming. One, two. OK, that'll do. Biggest by far, hey? We're dealing with a serious gator here. Everyone on. Brutus clearly isn't impressed with Tim's artwork. I've made a bit of a mess down here, boys. This fella's been marked everywhere. Right, oh, he's done. Right. One, two, three. There you go. Not a bad day at the office. Today was a success. Over the next days and weeks, we'll begin to watch them and build up a catalogue, some data that identifies who the troublemakers are, who the dominant gator is, who's being picked on, who's picking on others. We can then intervene and choose to remove an alligator and put them in a cooling off pond. Hi, Coco. Hi, darling, how are you doing? It's now been five days since little cat Coco was rushed into Sash after a shocking dog attack. Let's get you out. That's a girl. Okay. Hi, honey. Coco was viciously mauled by a dog. She had surgery, had a bit of a rocky recovery, and now it's time for her drains to come out. All right, now this is going to feel a little bit funny. Ready, Coco? We'll just do it quick. Well done. Good girl. You didn't even notice. But Lisa won't be able to relax until Coco starts to show some interest in food. No more of this hunger strike. We're offering her different things, but she just turns her nose up at it. I'm going to try again today and see how she goes. Hey, Coco, you want to try some of this? I take Coco's favourite food off the shelf, I warm it up, I prepare it nicely, and I put the bowl in front of her face. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a good girl. Look at you. Wow. Hey, that's so good. She's ravenous. <laughs> Within a matter of seconds, she just lays into it. And I am smiling a lot because this means that she is almost ready to go home. You're going to have some war wounds, but at least you've made it through, huh? You're pretty good. You're going to have fun, Cujo. You're going to do what you're told. Declan and Cujo are back at the Bondi Clinic for school. There we go. Puppy school. Hi, guys. Hi, Declan. How's, um, how's Cujo? He's good. Hi. He's been good. Come and take a seat. I'll just close the door and we'll oh, get started. I think Chris thought the puppy school would be good for Cujo because he's kind of spoiled and does whatever he wants, really. <laughs> Cujo, there's something wrong. 
When Chris first met cystic fibrosis sufferer Declan and his new cavoodle, he quickly worked out that Cujo was already a handful. He's learned that maximum volume gets maximum response. Because <laughs> I'm holding his paw there. That's, there's nothing more that I'm doing. Chris prescribed immediate enrolment in puppy school. So this is how your pup's going to learn how to interact with other people. Head vet nurse Neil is in charge. So by the end of the course, we're going to have happy socialised dogs. They're going to be happy meeting other people as well as meeting other dogs. If we get them to, to learn these things now, it means we're plain sailing for the rest of the dog's life. It's essential that precocious pup Cujo learn some manners because he'll be accompanying Declan on his many hospital visits. One of the most important responses is getting your dog to make sure that it knows its name and to come back to you. Bunny, come. Good girl. We want to make sure that they're safe and they're listening to us. And that could be something that saves your puppy's life. Get really excited. Come on. This way. Come on. Maybe mum can help a little bit. Come. That's a good girl. So call his name and then get him to come really excited. Here you go. That's it. That's it, good boy. When you're at home practising, that excitement will get him to come to you, OK? I knew that uh, Cujo would be good for him because uh, he does do what he's asked at home, but sometimes he mucks up, so I'm glad he did it well for him today in front of witnesses, so <laughs> Declan was still happy. Cujo, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Very good. So we've had a really good first class. Thank you for coming along and spending a bit of time. You guys are going to do a great job, I can tell already. So with Declan and Cujo, that bond is going to be so important for both of them. They're going to be best friends. They're going to go everywhere, do everything together. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work. You're doing really well there, Declan. Very impressed. I can see this amazing relationship happening for both of them there. Very well. Very proud of you. We love you. Great job. Coco. Hi, darling. It's time to go home. Hey. Good girl. You want to hop in here? Hey, you're a good girl. At Sash, it's good news for dog bite victim Coco. Coco is looking fantastic today. She's eating well, she's bright, she's happy, she's comfortable, and finally she is ready to go home. Owners Tracy and Vance are relieved their little girl's ordeal is finally over. I've prepared a little room for her at home. Everything's ready for her and we just want to take her home now and look after her. That's a girl. <laughs> They're going to be very happy to see you. Yes, they are. Let's go. Hello. 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 Yeah, there she is. Look who's here. <laughs> Coco. Hello, Cokes. Oh, my God. She looks fantastic. Mm. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Coco. Oh, you like that. When I brought Coco out to see Vance and Tracy, the smiles on their faces. At one point, they didn't even know if she was going to make it, and now she's in their arms again, purring and as happy as can be. And now she's just going to have to turn some heads with that new haircut. <laughs> Coco's so lucky, and we're lucky to have her. I can't believe that we're, we're leaving with her today. Thank you so much. No Thank problem. you. Thanks for looking. Thank no you, problem. Laura. Thank you. Thank you. She's in good hands at home, I know yes. that. And indoors only now, yep. please. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Treating Coco has been a little bit of a roller coaster. She wasn't looking good at all. And now, finally, she's going home, and that makes me one very happy vet. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.